people um i guess i'm gonna make this short because there's really not much to say you guys get what's going on that's why you clicked on this video so here are a few wire jewelry ideas for beginners to spice up your jewelry collection and maybe get a new hobby over this quarantine because i sure as hell need one if you want to know my name, my name is Maya. I'm a high school junior. Well, actually, I'm a high school senior because school just ended today. But yeah, that's really all you have to know about me and let's get on with the video. So let's talk about a few materials you might need. Unfortunately, this is not a hobby that you can do for free. You do need materials, so let's get into it. First, you obviously will need wire. For me, I usually use 22 gauge for all of my earrings and chains because it fits through your ear holes, which is nice. Um, in addition to wire, you will also need pliers. I have three. The first type is a round nose plier, and then there is a snipe nose plier, and then side cutters because they cut things, but really you honestly only need the round nose because that is what you will do most things with and then you can always cut the wire with scissors. So this is the first chain that I will show you. I call it a linked chain even though it's totally not original. Um, this is just what it looks like and a few ideas of how I style it. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but we're just going with it. So first you will need segments of wire about two centimeters long. It depends on how big the links are. All of my links are made with two centimeter long wire, so if you like that, just go with two centimeters. Quick side note, I am deciding to walk around while recording my voiceovers because mosquitoes are attacking me alive since I record my voiceovers outside of my house. And yeah, so if you hear my footsteps, it's because I'm walking around trying not to be eaten alive. Um, anyways, so once I get one two centimeter segment, I just basically cut all of the other ones off of that so I don't have to keep on remeasuring everything. So now that I have quite a few segments, I will put them all aside except for one, and with that one, I will start with my round nose pliers and basically bend it in half. It's kind of hard to describe what I'm doing because I'm not great with words, as you can probably tell, um, but I'm basically putting the wire about halfway up the round nose pliers because the round nose pliers are not the same width from the tip to the base. I'm not sure if all round nose pliers are like that or it's just me, but if they are, go about halfway up. Now I'm basically curling the very tip of each side of the half of the wire um, with the tip of the round nose plier just to create small loops and then using my fingernail to kind of center the loop on the wire. You'll see an up close shot of what the link should look like later on. Now I'm just fiddling with the loops to make sure they're completely shut and kind of symmetrical. I am pinching together the two ends so that the circles are lying perfectly against each other. Again, you'll see this later on because I'm terrible at explaining it. This is kind of just what the link should look like. Um, yeah, there's really not much else to say about this clip. It's pretty self-explanatory. Now I'm starting to create another link, but this time it will go slightly different. Again, I'm bending it in half and then starting to create the loops on each side of the wire. But unlike last time, instead of completely closing a loop, I will kind of leave it open so I can slide it into the loops of the other link. There's a really loud, obnoxious bird somewhere, but as you can see, I'm just sliding the link that I just made onto the first link that I made to create a chain. Now you can use the round nose plier to close the loop that you had previously left open, and then use the snipe nose pliers to close the two loops together and press them against each other. This is just me fiddling with the loop slash link. It really isn't this complicated, but I tend to make things overcomplicated. This is just what the two links together should look like. Again, can't really say anything about it because it is pretty self-explanatory. So here is the completed chain. Obviously, I did not make this chain from the two links that you saw me make previously because I am not that patient. To finish up the necklace slash bracelet, you need a clasp. So this one is just one that I took off of Google Images and recreated, but I'm pretty sure it's a universal idea, so it doesn't really matter. Basically, what you do is first create a very small loop with the tip of your round nose plier. Next, use a bigger part of your round nose plier to create a bigger loop, and that is basically the hook of your clasp. Go down the wire about a centimeter from the loop and cut off the hook. Now, taking the round nose plier again, make another loop, and this part is kind of hard to explain, but once you've made the loop, basically wind the extra part of the wire around the stem to make sure it closes off securely. 
My wire is kind of hard to manipulate, so if you want, you can use an extra pair of pliers to help you wind the wire around. Here is your completed hook. Now we are going to use a few jump rings to secure the hook to the actual necklace. This part is optional. You can obviously just attach the hook directly to the necklace if you leave the loop of the hook open for long enough. But since I forgot to do that, we are making jump rings. Basically just wind the wire around the thick part of the round nose pliers a few times and then cut off when you have a circle. Now you can attach the hook to the end of the necklace. Next, we have to create the other loop for the hook to go into on the other side of the necklace. First, use the thicker part of the round nose pliers to create a circle with a bit of a tail so that you can wrap the tail around the stem to make sure the circle is closed off securely. Again, if the wire is too hard, you may need two pliers to get the tail firmly around the stem. And now you should have something with a bigger loop and a smaller loop on either end. Again, you can either attach this to the necklace with a jump ring or do it directly before you close off the smaller loop of this bigger loop, I guess. And this is what they look like connected. It's not the most secure clasp in the world, but I do find that it is pretty effective and a lot cheaper than lobster clasps. So now we have a bit of a glitterier option, which is a beaded chain. This one's kind of a bit more fun. You can choose whatever colors you want and it's a bit more customizable than the linked chain. So first you will start with a whole bunch of beads. Obviously I just use these round glass beads, but you can basically use any bead that you want. Also, I acknowledge that it is a terrible color combination with the green on my nails, but that was a personal choice. So first you're going to measure about 1.5 centimeters along a piece of wire and pinch there with the round nose pliers. This is just me showing you the measurement because I am extra like that. Once you've pinched it with the round nose pliers, you can basically use your fingers to bring the wire around until you form a loop. When you wrap the piece of wire around, you should be able to go around at least once and maybe even twice, which looks better. If you're not going around that many times, you might have to do more than 1.5 centimeters. I really like just cutting off the wire from the big roll before I actually wrap the tail around because it's just a lot more convenient. Um, the tail that you should cut off at is again 1.5 centimeters. Now you can use the extra pair of pliers to wind the tail completely around the stem. And this is what you should have at this point, a loop with a tail wound around the stem and then a 1.5 tail after it. Now you're just going to put the bead on the stem, then use the round nose pliers to create another loop on the other side and basically make it identical to the one that you just made. It might take you a bit of time to manipulate the wire because my wire is kind of harder. I'll actually link the wire that I used below in the description box just so that it will be easier to access because this wire is actually surprisingly non-tarnishing like it hasn't tarnished in two months so that's a good sign i think so now we are going to make another one of those links obviously because that one link is kind of useless on its own for this second link it will basically be identical to the first until you get to after you put the bead on after you slide the bead on, you will create the loop, but you won't close it yet because you still have to attach it to the previous link. Now you can slide one end of the previous link into the new loop that you've just created. After you've done that, you can use another set of pliers to close off that loop and permanently seal them together. And yeah, you basically keep on repeating this process until you get the length that you want. And here's the final result. I really like how the beaded chain looks. It looks a bit more friendly and fun than the regular linked chain. So now we have the arched chain. This one is a bit simpler but also a lot easier to make than the other two because it is a bit more wire efficient as it doesn't involve all that complex twisting that the other two chains required. This one also involves some sort of charm or bead that you can hang off of the arch chain or I guess you could just wear it by itself without charms but I really like attaching charms like maybe eight or nine to the front of the necklace. Oh, I just realized I forgot to mention that the clasp that I showed you for the first necklace will basically work 
with any other of the designs that I am going to show you. So for this chain, you will need segments of about three centimeters. Like before, just cut a whole bunch of these segments from the original segment so you don't have to keep on remeasuring every time you need a new segment. So now you're going to create a small loop at one end of the wire and then kind of center it around the wire with your fingernail. Um, you'll see what I mean in the actual close-ups. Here's the twist, it's slightly more complicated, um, but you basically have to create the next loop on the other side of the arch perpendicular to the one that you just made so that they're kind of facing at right angles to each other. Kind of hard to explain again, but again, I will show you close-ups to show you guys what's actually going on. Now you can just arch the chain with your fingers or with a really big marker if you guys want. And this is your first link. So now you are going to make another link and connect it with the first. Again, the loops should be perpendicular with each other. Now connect the first link with the second link, but make sure to arch the chain in the direction that the second link connects with the first. This part is also kind of hard to explain, but basically the first link is already arched. So when you connect the second link to it, make sure to orient it the right way and then arch it in the same way that the first link is arched. Here is just an up close picture of what the two links should look like together. I hope you guys can see it slightly better now because I'm terrible at explaining things. So here's the whole necklace that I made. Um, you'll also need jump rings to attach the charms to the necklace and of course you'll also need clasps to make sure that the necklace doesn't fall off of your neck. Alrighty, let's get into some other ideas mostly for the linked chain because there aren't really many other ideas that I have for the other chains. So here's just me hanging a coin off of it. You can also attach a safety pin to a choker version of the linked chain, which I find kind of cool. Um, here's just an up close picture of what it looks like. So now I'm going to show you guys some really quick, easy, simple earrings that I like to make. Here is just a pair of stars that I make and wear literally all the time. I use a paper stencil so that I can easily manipulate the wire as you will soon be able to see. Here is a most likely very unnecessary tutorial about how to make the stencils, but I'll show it to you anyways. So basically I just search up clip art of a certain shape, in this case a star that I would like to make, and then I just click on the image that I like best, open it in a new tab, and then control plus or control minus it to the size that I want. And then if you put a piece of paper up against the computer, you will be able to trace the actual image with a pencil. Moving on, the stars that I'm about to make are about 1.2 centimeters on each side, but you guys can make it bigger or smaller depending on your size preference. The length of wire that you will need is nine times the length of the sides plus one centimeter just for the like tail to stick in your ear. I'm not sure what you call that. Once you've done the math and determined how many centimeters of wire you actually need, just cut that length of wire, obviously, and then start manipulating it. For the star shape specifically, it's actually pretty important to start your wire at this specific point on the star. If you start it at like one of the tips of the points, it just won't work, so trust me on that. But anyways, yeah, basically I just lie the piece of wire along that arm of the star, use my round nose plier as kind of like a pivot, and then bend the other part of the wire around the pivot. Obviously, this is just a rough draft. I will straighten out all the edges and corners later on after I'm done with the full shape. And yeah, I basically do that around the entire star until I'm done with the star. And also, for the formula that I showed you guys, it's probably a good idea to add like another extra centimeter just for mistakes or in case you measured incorrectly or something because you can always cut off wire but you can never add it. And here's the final product. I really like these. They're super cute, kind of minimalistic, but also a statement. I'm not sure how that works, but yeah. Another few examples of earrings that I've made are heart earrings and then bigger star earrings. You just like control plus until you get the size that you want. And with the heart earrings, you can also add beads, which I think is super cute. So yeah, that's kind of it for this video. Um, I know you didn't get to see my face, Many of you are probably glad about that because I can be really annoying, but yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys want more wire jewelry tutorials, I'm open to making them because I really enjoy making wire jewelry and I'm actually planning on selling some. So if you guys are interested in learning more about wire jewelry, just leave a comment down below. That is such a YouTuber statement and yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.